The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain Long Man Simplified English Series Read by Pishichai Nupakao Chapter 13 Homesick Joe loses his knife After dinner, all the gang set out the hunt for Toto Eggs on the sandbar They put Strike into the sand. And when they found a soft place, they went down on their knees and dug with their hands. Sometimes they took fifty or sixty eggs out of one hole. They had a grand fried egg first that night and another on Friday morning. After breakfast, they dash off on the bar and chase each other round and round, and then continue their game out against the stiff current. We swept their leg from under them from time to time and greatly increased the fun. Now and then, they stood in a group and threw water in each other's faces with their palms. Gradually approaching each other with face turned, turned aside and finally seizing each other and struggle until they all went under in confusion and came up blowing, laughing and grasping for breath at once and the same time. When they were exhausted, they would stretch out on the hot, dry sand and over themselves and, and cover themselves up with it. And after a time, they for the water again and do the same once more. Then they throw a ring in the sand and has a circus. With three lions timber in it. As it refused to have any other job. Next, they got their marbles and play Various games until they grow tired of his amusement. They had another swim and a long race. After this, they gradually wandered apart and began to crash longingly across the wet river at the village and sleep in the sun. Tom found himself writing. Becky in the sand with his big toe. He scratched in out and was hungry with himself for his weakness. Weakness. But Joe was so homesick that he could hardly bear the misery of it. Huck had a long face too. Tom was dull heart but he tried hard not to show it. He had a secret which he was not ready to tell yet, but if this depression was not broken up soon he was he would have to reveal it. Tom suggests that they should go hunting for pirates, treasure chase off gold and silver, but the other were not keen on doing so. Tom made other suggestions, but they fell too. It was discouraging work. Joe sat dug digging and streak into the sand and looking very gloomy. Oh boy, let's give it up 
said Joe finally. I want to go home. It's so lonely. Oh, no, Joe. You will feel better soon. Just think of the fishing here, and there wa there isn't another swimming place anywhere better than this. Swimming's no good. I don't seem to care for it. Somehow, when there isn't anybody to say that I mustn't swim, I want to go home. Well, we'll let the crying baby. Go home to its mother, won't we, Huck? Poor thing. This is one to see its mother, and so it shall. You like it here, don't you, Huck? We'll stay, won't we? Huck said, Yes, without any heart in it. I'll never speak to you again as long as I live," said Joe, raising the c o l l e g his belongings soon without a parting word. He began to walk slowly through the shallow water towards the Illinois bank. Tom's heart began to sink. He grinned at Huck. Huck dropped. His eyes. I want to go too, Tom. Said he. It was getting lonely, and now it's b e w o r d s Let's go too, Tom. Well, go. Who's hindering you? Huck walked sorrowfully away, and Tom watched them moving slowly on. Tom suddenly. Notice that everything has become every lonely and still. He made one final struggle with his pride, and then dashed after his friends. Wait, wait! He shouted, "I want to tell you something." They stopped and turned around when he reached him. He began unfolding his secret. And they listened gloomily, till at last they understood his plan. Then they gave a cheer and said that it was marvelous. They assured his that they would not have left him if he had told them before. Tom made up an excuse. But his real reason had been the fear that not ever the secret would have them, with his any very great length of time, and so he had mean to hold it in reserve as a last persuasion. The boys came gaily back and continued their sports. Talking all the time about Tom's plan and admiring the cleverness of it, after a delicious ate and fish dinner, Tom said that he wanted to learn how to smoke. Tom said that he would like to try too. So Huck filled pipe and. They stretch themselves out on their elbows, and began to puff consciously and with little confider confidence. The smoke had an unpleasant taste, and they grasped a little. Why is easy, Tom said. If I known that this was all. I have learned long ago, so would I," said Joe. "It's just nothing. I believe I could smoke this pipe all day. I don't feel sick. Neither I do. Neither do I," said Tom. "I could smoke all day. 
but I bet you Jeff Treasure couldn't. Jeff Treasure. Why? He's followed up with just two fuff. I said, boys, don't say anything about it. And sometime, when the boys are around, I will come up to you and say, Joe, have you got a path? I want a smoke. And you will say in a careless way, as if it was nothing, you will say, yes. I've got my open and another ones, but my tobacco isn't very good. And I say, "Oh, that's all right. If it is strong enough, and then you will take out the puff and will light them as if it was nothing. How they will stare! That will be grand, Tom." I wish it was now. So the talk ran on, but presently it began to drag a little. The silence within, speeding marvelously, increased. Fountains seemed to be at work inside their cheeks. Both the boys. We're looking very poor and miserable now. Joe's wave dropped from his fingers. Tom's follow. I lost my knife. Said Joe, friendly. I think I'd better go and fight. Tom rose. Unsteadily. And said with trembling lips, "I'll help you. You go over that way, and I search by the spring. No, you needn't come, Huck. We can fight." So Huck sat down again and waited an hour. Then he found it lonely and went to find his companions. They were wide apart in the woods. Both very far, both fast asleep, but something informed him that if they had had, and trouble they had got rid of it. They were not very talkative at supper that night. They had a humble look when Huck prepared his beef after the meal and was going to prepare theirs. They told him not to. They were not feeling very well. Something they ate at dinner had upset them.